okay guys uh, let's talk about integrons we have talked about the salmonella pathogenesis and we came to know that integrons played the very important role during the transfer of virulence factor genes from one bacteria to another bacteria during the horizontal gene transfer and this virulence transfer is majorly mediated by integrons and we know that integrons are bacterial genetic elements able to promote acquisition and expression of gene embedded within the gene cassette and what are gene cassettes we know gene cassettes are some stretch of genes without having any promoter element at the be very beginning normally so we are having gene cassettes and those gene cassettes are under a particular promoter which are functioning uh, of coding different virulence factor genes are called the part of integrons now uh, some of the gene cassettes are placed under a promoter some of the genes uh, cassettes are not placed under promoters promoter can be present or not that depends now normally this uh, functional platform of this integrons are made up with three key components one is the initial int i gene so as you can see in this picture this is the int i gene or integron i gene and a specific recombination site called ATTI or attachment i site and a promoter sequence which is called as PC and the integron i or INTI or int i gene encodes an integrase protein which is also termed as int i which belongs to the family tyrosine recombinase now that protein can cut a section of a gene out from this portion and can drag it and place it somewhere else in the same genome or the genome of other uh, bacteria for example if it's transferred between two salmonella species then uh, there will be the transfer using this tyrone tyrosine recombinase uh, produced by the int i now the gc's are uh, not so normally the gene cassettes are non repetitive mobile elements non repetitive sequence which mainly uh, made up with couple of uh, an, an open reading frame and they may encode antibiotic resistance gene or may not but it's not always that they are coding antibiotic resistance they may code or may not but uh, they are also having a site called ATTC which is another attachment site of some other genes so if some other genes are uh, there they can make entry through any of the gene cassette internal barrier like GC1, GC2 so the internal barrier of GC1, GC2 there is ATTC1 the uh, barrier between GC2 and GC3 there is ATTC2 so there are different attachment sites through which new genes or genetic animals can make their entry and all of these parts are under one promoter called PC just placed right after the int I gene now the GC's are integrated or excised from the functional platform by a site specific recombination mechanism catalyzed by the integrase enzymes INTI integrase enzymes that we have talked about so if we look at here the gene cassette now the cassette can be shuffled in their position by excision and reintegration processes throughout now what we can see here in this picture that here in this case integron GC uh, so integron part the GC or gene cassette C under this integron it can enter now the GC enters via this ATTI this particular site so now uh, normally the previous arrangement was integron then uh, integron I then GC1 GC2 but now it's integron I then GC3 enters between this ATTI and ATTC site so it will engulf in uh, embed itself between them and we get a larger integron now now three gene cassette is there now there can be deletion of a particular uh, gene cassette from this integron section for example we have seen that GC kinds of interact it kinds of cleaved out now during this addition or excision I remember we have told that uh, the normally that uh, uh, the, the process is mediated by uh, tyrosine recombinases and we know tyrosine recombinases are having the ability to cut a uh, genetic element and re-add the genetic element uh, by forming circular shaped genetic molecules so you can see here in all these cases when a gene cassette is cleaved out here in this case GC1 when a gene cassette is added like GC3 in all these cases when they're added or in their embedded the single gene cassettes are kind of circled in nature they're circled and the circle uh, they, they just cut and added by the circular shape like structure okay and and normally what they can do they can shuffle their elements uh, different way so there are different 
possibility and probability of this gene shuffling or the gene cassette shuffling between them. Now, uh, this shuffling uh, provides an uh, integron containing several antibiotic resistance genes and the trial and error process is always there and it moves the resistance gene the best combat the current antimicrobial challenge to a position where it will be more highly expressed. So what it is suggesting us that normally when the GC3 is present in nearer to this ATT site or this promoter site so the, so normally uh, whatever gene cassette present nearer to the promoter is going to express fast and very quickly that's the normal process so here in this case uh, previously GC1 is expressed but now once we see that GC is there so GC3 is embedded now the GC3 will be uh, expressed more than GC1 so there are trial and error processes that sometimes GC1 can express more, sometimes GC3 can express more or up during the shuffling sometimes G G GC2 can come, GC2 can express more. So it depends. So they are shuffling these ge genetic elements to figure out what is the perfect combination for them to express a certain type of a GC molecule, certain type of uh, GC sections having uh, 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 the resistance gene so that if they can express that particular antibiotic resistance gene at that particular time so for example at the very beginning GC1 codes for a resistance gene but uh, it is no longer required because a new antibiotic is provided and bacteria is going to die so they are kind of changing or shuffling the GC elements and finally they incorporate GC3 here now during this incorporation GC3 contains uh, the genetic element which will code for antibiotic resistance against the new antibiotic so now once when the GC3 is imparted there it will be expressed faster and the molecule will act against the antibiotic and thus bacteria will live for longer period of time due to the expression of this GC in this case so during these processes during this different expression processes like this GC expression that we have talked about so they can stay for longer period of time they can combat the current antimicrobial challenge to the particular position where it will make more and high expressing of the antimicrobial uh, drug okay so that is the importance of having this integrons that is the importance of having many gene cassettes inside the integron now there are two major types of integrons found one is called the chromosomal integrons another one uh, are mobile integrons chromosomal integrons or CIs and mobile integrons or MIs now the CIs are located on the chromosome of hundreds of bacterial species normally it is found in silico analysis the 70 percent 17 percent of the sequenced bacteria genome exhibited such kind of genetic arrangement it is found in the chromosome uh, the example is Vibrio species, Xanthomoma, Xanthomoma species and so on and uh, the CIs uh, also have termed as super integrons or SIs also as they can carry up up to 200 gene cassettes that mainly encode proteins with unknown functions uh, the function of those proteins still is not known but research is going on on the other hand the mobile integrons are located on the mobile genetic elements such as plasmids and transposons uh, with promote which actually promote their disse dissemination uh, of bact among bacteria and normally they carry very limited number of gene cassettes normally less than 10 gene cassettes there now the gene cassettes described to date is in these uh, mobile elements usually encode antibiotic determinants because that's why they are getting the advantage because as the mobile elements are getting this uh, antibiotic resistance properties they can shuffle they can transfer their elements from one to another from one place to another place from one bacteria to another bacteria and then they can spread this particular uh, resistant property uh, from one to another okay so that is why uh, they are important and uh, some of them are uh, and those integrons which are having this this special property of uh, antimicrobial resistance they are called resistant integrons or RIs or sometimes there also are multiple drug resistant integrons or MRIs are also present there so mostly the resistant or antibiotic resistant integrons are found in mobile integron part uh, normally so if you look at the classes of MIs the most of the MI or mobile integrons have been described as a wide range of gram negative bacteria and only uh, sporadic uh, sporadically in gram positive bacteria but based on the amino acid sequence of int i protein five classes of mobile integrons have been described from class 1 to class 5 
So normally class 1 to 3 are normally most common to detect but class 4 and 5 only have been detected once which is very few in this case. So if you look at here uh, many class 1 uh, mobile integrons have an extra 3 prime region. So normally the integrons are having kind of 5 prime conserved sequence. Uh, I forgot to mention that conserved sequence is containing this ATTR, int i, ATTR uh, 1 and PC. Uh, this, this section is the 5 prime conserved sequences that is normally required. But sometimes we also find in some kind of class 1 mobile integron there is a 3 prime conserved sequence or 3 prime CS is present and it is composed of kind of QAC, E delta 1 gene, there are different names of the genes I don't I encourage you to memorize. Uh, this this QAC, E delta 1 gene is a functional de de deletion of the QAC, E gene still conferring resistance to quaternary ammonium compounds such as ethidium bromide followed by another gene SUL1 or SAL1 gene conferring resistance to sulfonamides and another ORA5 encoding a protein of uh, unknown function. So what we can find in this 3 prime, normally 5 prime uh, conserved sequence is found in most of this uh, integrons but we sometimes find this 3 prime conserved where you are having this quaternary compound resistance gene, sulfonamide resistant gene, ORA5 which is not knowing, we don't know the function, we are having a separate promoter for that but we don't know the function of it but we are having a separate promoter for quaternary compound resistance as well as sulfonamide resistance genes. So these are a uh, very very new field of study as research is going on it needs to discover many more things because we know that everything is evolving because the bacteria and virus evolution is very very rapid very faster than normal human evolution. So we need to cope up with their model we need to think how they are evolving but we now know that horizontal gene transfer along with integron mediated virulence achievement is very very dangerous for bacteria. So if you look at here this is the group 1 mobile intron having 3 prime uh, specific uh, site where we are having ammonium quaternary compounds as well as uh, some other factors like SAL1 sulfonamide resistance gene, oxus amoxicillin resistance gene and ampicillin resistance genes and other genes can be present there or can be found there. Okay. So that's kind of it and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.